Shabbat Shalom. There's a story about Rabbi Shlomo Karlabach, who was a great modern Hasidic leader and a composer of so much Jewish music, that just a few months before he passed away, he went to see a friend who was also a, a Rebbe, a rabbi. And he said to him, I just don't hear the melodies anymore. I don't hear the nigunim anymore. Because his whole life, he'd heard melodies in his head. They would just fall into his head. They were always there with him. And he composed thousands of melodies. And they would just drop into his head. And he would go and grab a Tanakh and find the words that he thought went with the melody. And his melodies really inspired tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands to return to Judaism, to rally for Soviet Jewry, Am Yisrael Chai. And he could get almost anybody to hear the music. But then, just a few months before he passed away, it suddenly stopped. No more music in his head. And soon after, he dropped dead from a cardiac event at an airport. Our, our time in this world has a beginning and has an end. And some traditions speak of it, that we have a certain amount of breaths that we each take throughout our life and are fated to take, and the precious amount of time that we have while we're here, our work in society, loving the people in our lives, delving deep into the circumstances that we've each been given, and trying to find out what it means to be us in this world. And yet there are two parts of us that, that are present in this world, our body and our soul. And how they interact at the moments of entering this world and leaving this world are very mysterious. So in our portion today, Moses turns to the people at the end of all of his words and he says, I am now 120 years old. I can no longer come and go. And it is indeed God who will cross over with you before you. And so the commentators asked a question, what was Moses trying to say to them when he was saying, I am 120 years old, I can no longer come and go. And some said it was very simple. He was saying, I am 120 years old, I cannot physically be your leader anymore. His body had reached its boundary. And he was also saying, I'm 120 years old, do not be sad. There's no reason to mourn for someone of my age. But Rashi, on the other hand, he explains that Moses was telling the children of Israel, today my days are full, and as I was born on this day, I am to die on this day. And the Midrash teaches that Moses' sight was undimmed, he still was full of life, nor his force was dimmed, he was full. But he was not permitted to enter the land, and he could no longer shepherd. So that was that. And Rashi explains that at this moment, Moses no longer could take the lead in teaching the Torah, the law, because all of the traditions and what Rashi calls the wellspring of wisdom within Moses had stopped up, was no longer there. And so it was the moment where he'd reached his end. And there's a tradition that his soul was already on the move. It already started to go to the other world. And it's why the Parsha is called Vayelech, which means, and he went. And it never says who went and where they went, but the Zohar teaches Moses' soul had already left the world, and Moses had no more control over his spirit. It had already begun the transition. And so he was telling them, I can no longer come and go. My spirit's time has come. And yet if we think, it must have been comforting to them, because it was obvious to them that Moses was more than a 120-year-old body that was in front of them. And they knew that some of his spiritual power had gone to Joshua, and his teachings would remain with the law that they were to embody in their collective memory. And in the words that he shared with them and with Joshua at the very end, be strong, be resolute. And we know that God was with Joshua just as God had been with Moses as they entered the land. And so there are different parts to our lives in this reality. And all of our 
Jewish history attests to it, all everything we've been through, but our spirits have been strong despite everything. And part of this period of the year that we are in now is to remind us ourselves of that parts of our being that we often forget about. The mysteries of life. As we spend time in this room thinking about our days in this world and all the people that we have known and still know, and to find comfort in all the different signs and circumstances that there is more to life than just what we can see. The master composer who loses his ability to hear the melody and the lawgiver who can no longer teach and all the different examples from our lives where we see there's more to what's happening here or that experience of being with our loved ones at the end. And we're reminded that this world is just a place of passage and yet, we can still, nonetheless, decide to spend our time working while we're still here to enliven that deeper part of ourselves so that we are more aware of it, more connected to it. We can feed it and we can find all the ways that we each know to nourish it so that it grows and flourishes by listening, since it's the theme of this period, listening to the voices of tshuva within us of repentance, of return, whispering to us what we need to do. And those voices are urging us to spend our days repairing and healing rather than destroying and hurting. By trying to connect to matters that do inspire us, give us something, until we can feel the difference between the two within our own living days, between the two parts of us. Until our spirit is strong and flourishing, giving spiritual food to all others. And so according to tradition, Moses did not die as a normal human being. His spirit, was, his spirit was so strong that even as his soul had already been removed, he walked up the mountain and then he just disappeared. His body was taken up, absorbed, gone. So the Talmud, in a long passage, speaks of his death as a loving kiss, right? For some, death is a challenging experience on this side and when they cross the other side. But for Moses, it was lifting, it was like gently lifting a hair out of a glass of milk. The separation was barely felt. He was fully aware of who he was, what was before and what was coming. So every year we are called to do tshuva, repentance. We're exhorted to remember the return of our souls, and to bring a little bit more value to our part of our being. And if we follow this path, then we'll find in reality there is no separation. None have come and none have left, for we are all one. Shabbat Shalom.